and happy new year this is Bonnie and um, today I'm going to try something again a little bit different than what I have been doing in the past and I'm going to be using some fairy hug stamps and this one is called skinny bear tree and there's two different trees this one's taller you can also do it with the one that's shorter I'm also going to be using this is called spooky moons but in this set I'm going to be using these um, plain ones and actually they don't you know it looks like they um, are black when you get them but they're actually clear and um, you can make them any color that you want to and I'm going to use that idea in, in stamping today so the other thing I'm going to be using is a watercolor paper this one is a little bit cream I'm going to be using several um, inks as well so I'm going to go ahead and get us set up um, to stamp first. Okay, so I'm all <clears throat> set up and ready to go. I am going to be using a uh, Versafine Clear Pine Cone for all of my tree trunks. And um, I'm going to be doing this one. It's on a 5x7 piece of paper. I don't know if I already said that. And I'm doing it horizontal, which means I have to flip this back and forth as I'm stamping. And I'm using the VersaFine Clear, um, and there's always an option. If you want this, you'll see my technique. If you think that you're gonna want this technique so that it is not as uh, defined, if you want it to be a little bit more runny, then, and again, I'm stamping on watercolor paper, so it's gonna take a little bit more ink because it's porous. And actually, it's not going to probably matter as much if it is, if it's not a solid stamp. Um, I think I'm going to do that for this one just to see how that looks. Um, because I think there's a lot of options we can do. But I'm going to go with this one first and see how that works. So I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to really make it look like it's like a, a force and it is going to overlap. Um, and I'm just trying to decide if I want it to go up higher. I think I do. So it's coming off a little bit off the bottom. And again, that's okay because we can even trim this if I find I want to. Um, and I can even make, as you can see, that kind of be faded in the background. So this doesn't have to be stamped full, but I think I'm still going to do that. So many options. But I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to stamp that again and I'm going to go across the paper and make it look kind of like a forest but I'm going to leave the center here um, a little bit more open so that it allows me to put a sentiment or um, a figure of some sort if I want to. There, that's exactly what I want there so I'm not going to make it perfectly symmetrical because a forest ball isn't really um, but you can so I've got that side I'm going to go for this side all right and again like I said I'm just going to make it kind of like not symmetrical but at the same time I want this little space right there And just keep that in mind. You can. This is one of those um, designs that you could really do anything in terms of making your forest. You can use, um, like I said, the big and there's another, like I said, stamp that's a shorter stamp. You could use that and mix this up. Um, all kinds of things. You can make it so that the ink, because um, I am doing watercolor with this, you could make it so this ink um, isn't water resistant so that it could run when we do the second technique. Um, lots of options. And I'll just show you the one. All right. So I'm going to do it one more time. And that's going to be over here. I'm not sure if it's going to go off the side, so we'll put the paper this way. And 
think I'm gonna go a little bit down, but not exactly the same as the other one. Okay. And again, I could really do the faded behind. And you know what, just because I'm liking that, it wasn't my intention, I'm gonna do the, I think I'm gonna do some second generation behind just to give that shadow. All right. Okay, so I am gonna do the second generation. I'm gonna put that right between, you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm going to, I put that right between, and I'm just gonna press down. All right, so that got me a little bit of darker spot there because that one didn't, you could see. Huh. So let me give that a little bit more color so it blends in a little bit better. That's better. And that's okay. I probably wanted it a little bit less, but it's okay because of what I'm doing, I'm fine with it. And you'll see why. All right, this one is gonna look more second generation, but I'm giving it more color. Like I said, there's so many things you can do. Okay, that's great. All right, now for the second part, I need to set that up. I need to take this all out of the stamp platform. This is what I want, and we're gonna do the next technique, or the technique. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit new for me, um, but that's okay, because I wanted to do something different. I um, went ahead and put that on some paper towel because I know I'm gonna get messy. And the two um, spooky moons, um, the plain ones, I've got on blocks. Um, and I've got several distressed colors I have pulled out that I'm gonna give it a try. So the first one I'm gonna do is frayed burlap. And, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp up this block as best I can. I wanna get some ink on there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want some ink. And then what I'm gonna do, I might do this two different ways, is I am going to give that a little bit of a spray. Okay. And I'm also gonna spray a little bit on my, on my um, paper, on the section I'm gonna be putting it on. Okay, and I'm gonna go right over those, the top of the tree, just like that. I really want it just to be messy. And then, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit more spray. I want it messy and runny. And then I wanted to get this other side while that one's getting runny. You can see how we're just getting that, how it's kind of rolling around there a little bit. That's what I want. So I'm gonna work on the other side and put a little bit more ink on my, and give that a little bit of a mist again and mist on this side. I said I just want it to be inky in the background there and I can even keep bringing that around that's super and I don't want it totally that circle but that's okay because I'm going to be stamping on top of that yet get that a little bit runny okay so um, the next color I want to go with even while that's wet. And what I like about this oxide is that it changes a little bit of color for me. And I like that too. I'm running that around a little bit. So I'm gonna add more. And the color I wanna add next is a Selvage Patina. I've got a couple here that I wanted to try, but I can see as I'm working what I want. I'm gonna wipe off what I just used on here a little bit and put that selvage patina on there. And we're probably gonna be really being messy with this. 
Again, I'm going to give that a little spritz. This is still a little bit wet, but I'm going to give it a little bit spritz. And I'm just going to be putting that on, adding some color to that area as well. I don't want it to get too saturated. Okay, I don't need more, I don't need more water on there at the time. I can see that it's saturated. Just want to put it on my stamp now. Okay. And we'll come over here. Give us some more ink. Okay. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna give that a little bit more color, I think. And I have some more color. I'm gonna have it come down too. And I might need to get a little bit more of the brown on here. I need some water down here. I did not have as much water at the bottom. All right, so I like that so far. I am gonna add some a little bit more brown, frayed burlap. And actually, so far, I'm not really a whole lot needing the small one, although I could have totally done it in the small stamp instead of this large one. All right. I'm going to spray some down here. I'm going to lightly touch it so I can get that around. I like that. Okay. I'm going to get that a little bit runny. that's doing that I'm going to get a little bit more patina on there selvage patina actually I really want to work while it's wet I don't want to wait for it to dry but sometimes you might want to even do that like I said there's just so many options you can do playing with this but I really wanted that background Okay, I'm adding a little bit more selvage patina. All right, I really like that. So, the next thing I wanna do, I wanna do a little bit um, darker down here on the bottom to ground it. So, I think I am gonna use a small one for down there. I think that'll work. And so I also pulled out Gathering Twigs. It's a little bit darker than the frayed burlap and I wanted it to have that contrast. So let's give that a try. There's some other things too. I'm thinking, you know, if you have your um, pigment powders, you could be putting pigment powder on here and stamping that as well. That would be really pretty. So I just want this around the bottom a little bit. You can see how I'm just gradually adding that. It's tapping it on so it doesn't really look like a circle. And do that again. And I didn't put as much water there. So it's giving me a little bit different look. I just am spraying the um, the stamp. And just kind of turning that around like that really kind of like makes it look good too. Okay, I think I'll give that, um, I think I need a little bit more right here. And that's how you do it. You just kind of like look at it and how you want to really design that whole background. But I really do like this a bit darker down here. That looks that looks good. I guess you could add a little if you have some left over and you want to add a little bit to that 
background you could. It's not really showing up right now. I think I pretty much used it. So that's kind of, I think that's just really pretty. And then as the um, um, Distress Oxide even changes color, I'm gonna add a little bit of water down here just to blend it slightly. You can see. And then I still have that space right here that I can stamp an image or sentiment. So I'm gonna let that dry because it really needs to dry really well um, before I do any other kind of stamping on there. And I can probably even dry it with the um, heat gun if I want to. But I think that has turned out really, really pretty. And I think you can see that was pretty easy. It's just a matter of stamping and adding water um, to it. it makes a really pretty background and now you can I'm gonna go ahead and put something here so I'll figure that out and I'll be back after that dries okay so I made a decision and I've chosen to use mini deer the fairy hex mini deer we have um, four choices and I've got the dough um, sent up in the middle and I am going to stamp her in um, Ursafine Clear Nocturne. What I did do for my paper to speed up the drying process a little bit is I did um, heat set it and then I brought it to my ironing board and I ironed it with my craft iron. I have an iron that I just use for mostly for crafts and that helped me straighten out any, um, I want to say, because um, it's wet, watercolor paper kind of like um, warps a little bit so that helped me um, keep it straighter and um, again because this is a watercolor paper it has that texture and I need to stamp it at least twice Okay, and I did her um, in black. It makes her come closer to the front, um, I think, even though she's probably behind the trees. And then I'm also going to use the, um, we call these a buck, and I'm going to use him with, um, he's kind of like looking, or you can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. Um, he's kind of looking at her. She's looking at him sort of being shy and I am going to stamp that in Morning Mist because I do want that closer or behind the tree. So we'll go ahead and do that a minute. And the thing about the Morning Mist is that if it's too light, um, I can always stamp it again. And in this case, I'm probably gonna have to stamp it again because it's being in the, because of the um, paper. So it will make it a little bit darker. I do like the shadow of that, but I want it a little bit, stamped a little bit more solid. That looks pretty good. And what you can do, because you can see, you can kind of see him through the tree. I can come back in there, whoops. I can come back in there even with my pencils and add a little bit so you can, so it looks like he is more behind the tree. Um, and that's what I'll do. So the other thing I'm thinking I'm still gonna try to do is I still think I want a little bit of um, shadow um, of the other trees behind. So I am gonna come back in very lightly with a morning mist and give some more depth to that. I think that'll work. And I'm not stamping it more than once, even if it doesn't look really solid. It's okay, because really the background wouldn't be as solid in you know the shadows. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna add a little bit I'm not going to make it perfect either. I don't want it to line up perfect. I'm just going to do some. I'll probably come off to the side too.
and I'm not really tapping it really, really heavy. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to do this side, and then I'll probably add some to the edges. Again, you can see how far I go, so if you don't like that with more in the background, don't add more. Um, or add a different tree or whatever. But I do want a little bit more in the back. Okay. Yeah, I like that better. And then I don't want to really totally cover up my deer. But I do want a little bit of this. So we'll go really close to the deer. And again, you don't have to add any more if you don't want to. And I'm going to go to the other side. Just to add a little bit. And again, I mean, now I want to take a look at that and see how that looks. I think that's okay. I mean, I'm thinking if I wanted more color, I could add just a little bit more of that um, ink to the front of those. And I think I might do that. I think I might go and get my um, moon stamps that I put in the other room. And I think I am going to add a little bit more um, blue just to the front, I think, of that. I mean, it looks good looking at it just that way, but I don't think I want it as, um, I don't think I want the branches as dominant. So I'm gonna go back and get my um, ink and put a little bit more, I think, of the selvage patina on there. Okay, so I got my um, smaller one, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and miss that again. Like, I don't think I'm gonna miss the paper, we'll see. Um, maybe I will, just to, I'm just gonna give a little mist to that center there where there's a lot more of the branches. And just put some of that over the top. I like that better. It kind of like makes it a little bit more, whoops, faded. I didn't want the branches to be as dominant. It looks a little bit more faded. I'm gonna add just a little bit more, I think. I mean, just do it to what you know you like. You can see like the um, the levels that I've been adding it. So you can see if like, okay, I'm not gonna go that far or I like that much. So I think that's it. I think that's that's what I like. If anything, I could even add a sentiment, I guess, but it would have to be very small, but I like that. Um, like I said, it's a five by seven. It will even fit in a five by seven frame. And um, I might even end up making a frame that actually has um, wood um, branches from the yard or whatever to give it a little bit more character that way as well. But um, I'm gonna show that to you a little bit closer. I really do like um, the way that turned out. I really like that type of uh, technique to do. It was really fun. I hope you enjoyed that. I am going to leave all the um, products that I use the in the description below. I'll have a list so you know what I used. So thanks so much for stopping by.